What's going on, YouTube? So while most of the rivals have migrated to car-based crossovers over the years, few crossovers have stuck with their traditional SUV routes. This Durango is one of them. And today, for the first time, we are sampling this macho SUV equipped with none other than the Hemi V8. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see if the performance backs up the looks. So probably one of the biggest reasons you might be interested in the Durango is because it has a really cool exterior design and more so here with this RT model. Now up in the front, it has what I call the mean mesh grill because it's different from the traditional crosshair grill. As you can see, this is all mesh and then you have Dodge spelled out across the top there. And then you also have a lower uh, grill down here which does have that same kind of mesh material. And then the other thing that really finishes off this mean front end is that you have a hood scoop up here on the top of the hood. Now, as far as your headlights, uh, these are actually going to be HID headlights here on the RT trim level. You do have a uh, incandescent turn signal and an LED daytime running light. Now, there is a refresh coming in 2021 that's going to switch this up to some LEDs, but for now, this is what you have. And then down here at the bottom, you will find LED fog lights. So squatting down here at your wheels, the RT is going to throw in 20 inch alloys um, as standard equipment. Now it comes in three different finishes for this same exact wheel. The regular model is gonna have the contrast look. Here with the black top model, we have the full gloss black, which I really like. And if you wanna go really crazy, you can actually get a bronze finish, which is very interesting for sure. Now, moving on up here, this Hemi badge, this is actually new for 2020, so a nice subtle detail. It is black with the black top package. And then coming up here to your mirrors, they will always be heated. You also have driver's side auto dimming, and then blind spot monitoring is gonna be available for $4.95. Now, for a family crossover, I have to say this Dodge Durango here at the rear and also in the front, uh, excuse my language, but it's just completely badass for a three row uh, crossover. I mean, that's why this thing is still selling pretty well. Now, as far as how it is equipped feature wise, uh, we are gonna have a standard full length LED tail lights as a really cool look. Down below that, we do have black badging here on this black top model. And then at the bottom, we are gonna have a standard dual exhaust uh, pumping out that awesome Hemi V8 sound. And as far as your towing for the rear wheel drive model, that's gonna come in at 7,400 pounds. <laughs> Now Dodge is going to throw in auto high beam headlamps as standard across all of the Durango lineup and if you want the advanced safety systems that's going to be included in the advanced safety group. That'll include all of the modern stuff that you're looking for like forward emergency braking and adaptive cruise control. But that's gonna be it for this really cool exterior styling of this Durango Blacktop Edition. Uh, so now let's go ahead and hop on the inside, see all the utility they put in there before we take it out on a spin. So walking up to this Durango, you will find a smart entry system standard across every trim. And here on the RT, you will find standard remote start. Now to get inside the vehicle itself, there is a sensor behind the handle, so all you have to do is grab it. All right, so looking inside of this cabin, you'll see that it's pretty much exactly the same as the previous model years for 2020, but obviously you do have that refresh coming up next year. Now Dodge does give you a lot of different ways you can equip this interior. What we have is the standard option, which is going to be a leather trim seat with suede in the middle. And this comes in black only. However, if you pay about an extra $800, you get 
uh, full leather seating, and that comes in black, brown, or a really cool option of red. Now turning over here to your door trim. This is nicely finished. We have a leather trim that goes all through here with a contrast stitching detail. Uh, we have a fake aluminum trim right through there and it is soft touch along the top. As far as the windows, they're gonna be one touch automatic for the driver and the passenger. And then jumping down here to your seats here on the RT, this is gonna be an eight way power adjusting seat with four way lumbar support. And then like I was already saying, we have the uh, suede and leather seats. So all the outside as well as the top is going to be leather. And then the inside has this really nice suede texture. Uh, I think it really adds to the sporty appearance of this cabin. Now, like I said, the actual design itself has not really changed this year, um, but there are some material differences. We have the standard version. However, this year we have a premium interior option on the RT. So instead of this soft touch plastic we have along the top of the dash on this model, this could all be subbed out for a leather trim with stitching. And then the headliner would also become an Alcantara instead of the uh, regular version that we have on this model. Uh, but beyond that, we still have some more of this silver trim. Like I said, this is all soft touch plastic. Down in the bottom areas, this is going to be hard touch plastic, but everything does fit together very well. Now across all the Durango lineup, just press the button to start. And right off the bat, you'll hear that Hemi, which is the reason you get this RT. So taking a look here at the gauges, this premium gauge cluster is actually standard across every single Durango with the seven inch multifunction display right there in the middle. And this of course does contain a ton of information and it is very vivid as well. Now coming back to the steering wheel, we have a very nice wheel with the latest Dodge design. It is nicely leather wrapped. Um, you will also find that it is power adjusting here on the RT model and then heating is also standard as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into interior storage. Now I really like the way that the storage is set up in this Durango because we have two tiers. So here in the top part, we have a little bit of space and this is perfect for sticking our stack of coupons right in there like that. Then you can just set that down and you have basically a coupon tier and then you have your main tier. Now this tier here is very deep you have plenty of space, a really nice felt lining, as well as a 12 volt outlet. And we have a little spot right there, two cup holders with ambient lighting inside, then another really large bin up here in the front with two USB ports, an aux jack, and a 12 volt outlet. Now coming back to the shifter, this looks like an electronic shifter, but it actually is not. So you pull back for drive. You can bump over here to the left if you want to shift manually and here on the RT model, we do have paddle shifters. Heading into reverse, you will find a standard 360 degree camera system across all the models. Uh, we do have active trajectory as well as parking sensors that appear right there in the gauge cluster for this RT model. Um, but do be aware you cannot get a 360 degree camera system at this time. All right, so let's jump on up here to our climate controls where we have a standard three zone automatic setup across the entire Durango lineup. It is very simple to use. You just adjust your temperatures right here and this adjusts your fan speeds. Uh, you can also click the climate button and that will pull up some more of your controls which will include uh, your zones and redundant temperature controls as well. Now additionally up here, if you click the controls button, that's where you'll find the controls for your two stage heated seats. Those come standard on the RT model and you can also get optional ventilation if you want. All right, so now that brings us here to our audio systems. Now standard on the RT, you get a 506 watt nine speaker Alpine sound system already, but you can also get an 825 watt 19 speaker Harman Kardon sound system if you want. We've got the standard system, so let's go ahead and sample that.
have to say, this sound system is phenomenal. Uh, unless you're a real audiophile, there's really no need for you to get that upgraded sound system because this one sounds great. Okay, so now let's focus our attention here on our Uconnect system. So since the RT trim level is one of the higher ones, this is going to come standard with this 8.4 inch display. Uh, it does include navigation as well, but although the lower models do come with a standard 7 inch display instead. Now this is pretty much the same as in any other FCA product. Like I said, we have standard navigation here on this model. Uh, you will also find both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities on board. Now jumping on up here, you will find an auto dimming mirror. Uh, this is included standard on the RT. And then up top here, we have the moonroof. This is an option for $1,200 across all of the Durango lineup. So this Durango isn't all about style. It's also got to be good for the family too, back here in the second and third rows. And I'm happy to say this is a, a very nice place to spend time. It's going to come in at 39 inches of rear legroom, 40 inches of rear headroom, which is slightly behind that of the Ford Explorer. And behind rear seating position, I probably have uh, 7 to 8 inches of rear legroom. My feet can easily slide up underneath the seat, so it's pretty much class competitive uh, with most of the rivals. Now, as far as what they've thrown in, you do have standard vents as well as your own climate controls. The climate controls are up here on the ceiling, um, and you can adjust your zones and temperature. And then down below that, we have two charging USB ports. Uh, you can drop this down and give you a household style outlet. And you're also going to notice that this RT does have standard two-stage heated rear seats. Now you're probably noticing the captain's chairs. These are going to be an individual option on this RT model. So let's go ahead and check out the third row of this Durango. So in order to get in, just locate this little lever right here that will fold the seat flat. Then you need to find this little red strap. And when you do that, it does lift up out of the way. So this is actually a very good way to get into the third row. Let's go ahead and hop back here and see what it's like though. Alrighty. So getting back into this third row. Wow. I, I'm, I have to say I'm very impressed. This is my first time back here. Uh, your, as far as your leg room, it's actually going to come in larger than the Ford Explorer, and I can definitely feel that. Uh, I have a lot of thigh support too. As you can tell, um, the floor is actually pretty low and the seats are pretty high, so that makes it a lot more comfortable than the average vehicle in this class, like a Toyota Highlander, for instance. Um, as far as your features, we have cup holders on each side, and we do also have our own climate vents, so you're not going to suffocate back here in this third row. So walking up to the tailgate, the Durango isn't going to offer a hands-free option, but it is power, so just locate that button under the lid, and it will open right up. Now, once inside of this cargo department, you're going to find a pretty good amount of space. It's going to come in at 17 cubic feet behind the third row seats, expands to 43 cubic feet behind the second row, and if you fold all of them, that's going to be 85 cubic feet. Um, now, as far as how that compares to the competition, that's slightly behind the Ford Explorer, but really on par with most of the other rivals. Now, as far as the finishings, we have a nice carpeting along the floor. If we lift it up, we do have an additional storage space up under here. Uh, you could probably fit quite a bit of stuff back here, uh, definitely disguised, so you can hide your uh, expensive belongings in there. Off to the side, we do have another storage cubby. And then as far as how you fold the third row, you just grab this little lever and push forward. And the button is off to this side, not on the top. <laughs> the passenger seat is going to be eight-way power adjusting with four-way lumbar support. And then in front, as far as the glove box is concerned, it's nicely uh, dampened and felt lined. And our big fat stack of coupons, can they fit? They can. It's about the exact uh, width to be uh, to fit these, and you could probably fit about three of our coupon stacks in there. So, a plus. And then up top, we do have a sun visor with lighting as well as a mirror, and it does also detach as well as extend. Sound. 
You can't beat the sound of a Hemi. I mean, it's just excellent. There's wow. nothing else to say about it. I mean, let's be real. That's the reason you're watching this video is for that just ridiculous Hemi V8 sound. <laughs> Now this being the RT, that means this is the trim level that has the standard Hemi, 5.7 liter Hemi V8, 360 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. So definitely really, really nice power numbers. Um, you know, and like we we're saying kind of at the beginning of the video, there's just not a lot of SUVs that still go this traditional yeah. route. You know, because basically, I don't think there's any V8s. The Tahoe is not really exactly a competitor to this per se. It's more of in line with the mainstream offerings. And most of those yeah. come start with like a four cylinder and then maybe an optional V6, you know? Yep. So th I mean, this is just a really unique route that Dodge has gone with this Durango. This sounds better than like a Tahoe's 5.3 liter V8 for sure. Absolutely. It just sounds absolutely wicked and it really just matches really well with the uh, just masculine and really awesome exterior design. You know, this is, uh, like he was mentioning, this is a very unique offering, especially when you compare it to what you're going to get price-wise, um, like a Honda Pilot or a Toyota Highlander. They're not going to give you any of this whole package, like exterior styling, that big V8 engine or anything like that. Right. Now, there is a V6 engine, the 3.6 Pentastar V6. That's going to be standard on all the other trim levels besides for this yep. RT trim level. Uh, you know, and power figures on that are roughly in line with the rivals, if not more. Like I said, a lot of the rivals come standard with four cylinders at this point, so you will still get standard V6 power no matter what. And now that we're just cruising here, going around 60 miles an hour, this is, you know, it, it's not just a hot ride. It has to be comfortable for all of the family, uh, for all three rows. And, um, you know, I will say it's probably a little bit louder in here than some of the uh, more plush competition like the Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot, uh, but definitely not, not in the area of being uncomfortable. get a sound level reading going 55 miles per hour. Fifty-six and a half decibels. Um, that is a touch louder than stuff like uh, the Highlander Platinum that we've tested, uh, but really not out of the ordinarily loud or anything like that. Right, and what I'm hearing is pleasant sound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As far as the transmission, it's going to be an 8-speed automatic, standard across the range. Really nice shifting transmission, uh, smooth, quick, you know, just really uh, kind of just blends into the background. Yeah. You don't really notice it much at all, and that's pretty much what you're looking for since this is, a, you know, about being comfortable at the end of the day and having, you know, your whole family with you. And as far as your drivetrains, this is... Uh, going to be actually rear drive as compared to most of the competition is going to be front wheel drive. Um, the Ford Explorer is not rear drive, but uh, Super rear drive. Rare. Yeah, it is pretty rare for this type of vehicle. Um, so standard rear drive, optional all wheel drive. And as far as your slam dunk and air ball, you can probably guess um, what our slam dunk is going to be. It's just going to be that fantastic Hemi V8 engine. Um, not only just because it sounds good, not only because it's powerful, but also just because no one else does it. Um, this is the only one that you're going to get a big V8 engine in in the segment that this competes price-wise against. And if you're comparing it to a Tahoe, then it's going to be a lot cheaper. So uh, that's definitely going to be our uh, slam dunk for the D Durango. 
Now as far as the air ball, um, we'd say that it's probably the design of the cabin is yeah. a little bit dated looking. Uh, you know, the materials are not really too bad, um, but the design, you know, just a little plain Jane, you know, it kind of does remind you of that this, you know, dates back to, to 2011, quite <laughs> yeah. a while ago. Um, but if you hang around for another year, 2021, the refresh is going to actually uh, spruce up this cabin quite significantly. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting a Durango now. Um, you might, you can either choose to get one now or you can wait and see what the refresh is going to be like. Now lastly here, we're going to discuss the fuel economy. Um, so as you might expect, that Hemi V8 isn't going to be great for the gas mileage uh, compared to some of the rivals. So it's going to be 14 city, 22 highway, 17 combined. Um, if you go for the uh, 3.6 liter engine, um, that's going to be 21 combined. So that's, that's pretty much in line with the other rivals V6 options. Uh, but of course you are going to have a, a pretty significant penalty to go for that V8 uh, Hemi. Now since this is basically the muscle car of free row <laughs> crossovers, I want to talk about how it handles. Um, I have to say I'm very impressed by this. I think Dodge took a lot of what they have learned with the SRT and the yeah. uh, you know upcoming high performance models uh, and put it into this RT because it really handles remarkably well for something so big. You know this is bigger than a lot of the competition. It's over 200 inches long. It's also quite heavy but yet it really uh, feels surprisingly maneuverable when you're behind the wheel, even on like a small country road like we're on. You know, you feel confident maneuvering it because the steering is very accurate and it stays, uh, you know, pretty planted as well. Now the question you're probably uh, the most curious about is that since this is kind of the hot rod V8 option of the Durango lineup, how much uh, is this going to cost you compared to some of the other rivals like the Pilot and Highlander? Um, so for this RT, uh, it's going to start at 44395 which definitely is not more expensive than the competition. Um, if you go for one of the lower trims, the Citadel is 42995 the GT is 34995 and the X SXT is 30795 um, So you're looking at very uh, competitive pricing with the segment. Now as far as this one's equipment level, we do have a few options on that. So we have the black top package for $12.95, the uh, second row captain's chairs for $11.95, and a power sunroof for $12.95. Um, all in brings this one to $52,275, um, which it, that is uh, roughly in line with the uh, competitive set's top trims. Uh, but I do want to point out that this Dodge Durango can be discounted probably more than some of the competition as well. And uh, you're getting that V8 engine, uh, which is something you will not get in any of the competition. Right. And overall, I think that really is a great summary of the reason why you would want the Durango. It's, it's really a unique offering. It's truly unique. You're just not going to get anything like this from any of the competition. And, um, you know, like Mason's saying, you know, for roughly the same price, maybe even a little less than some of these kind of like uh, mommy mobile crossovers, uh, you get a tough, masculine performance SUV. Um, and it uh, truly is a special product that I think find uh, very appealing. Well guys, that's going to be all for this in-depth review of this awesome 2020 Dodge Durango RT. If you enjoyed this video, there's about 500 more full reviews on the channel as well as face-off comparisons and Tesla content. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.